Hey guys, Dimitri here. In this video, we're going to cover Google's new rendering service, Zinc. So, let's get to it. This is a common scenario. You have modeled your objects meticulously, you have textured them, and now you're ready for the final step, rendering. If you're lucky, you might have more than one machines, but your project might still be too difficult to render. This is where our rendering service comes in handy. Throughout the years, I've tried several different uh, providers, and even though all of them did the job more or less, they all had their quirks, and most importantly, I was always afraid about the final cost. Google Zing is no exception, especially when talking about quirkiness, but I would say the service overall is quite good. You can send jobs through your application, you have a relatively good overview of how your render is progressing, and the most important thing, you have 50 machines at your disposal. So even when you're using the slow 8-core option, you still have 50 of them to work with. I used Zinc extensively to render my short patterns, and I was quite pleased with how everything turned out. Zinc has definitely made it possible to finish everything in a normal time frame. But as you can imagine, it's not all sunshine and roses. Especially the setup process is something worth mentioning. So here goes. You first register to this site here, which then sends you to another website that acts as a central place for your rendering jobs, saved frames, and general account management. You then go to the Google Cloud website, where you need to navigate your way around a million different options and set up your billing details. Once you do that, you go back to your Zinc account and find the links for the client and the plugin that will be installed in your 3D app. We're halfway there now. You then set up your account details on the Zinc app, and finally you go through the installation process for your 3D app. And this is where things get tricky again. Apparently Google is looking for a folder that has the exact same name as your 3D app folder when it was first installed. In my case, Cinema 4D. So if you're like me with a folder of Cinema versions with different names, then the installer won't see any of them. You need to first rename your app folder to the name Maxon used on first install. But of course, the installer won't see that version if you run it again. You first need to uninstall the plugin and then run it again. Once you do that, the installer will immediately find Cinema. Piece of cake, right? Thankfully though, once you're finished with that, it's almost smooth sailing from there. The interface from within the app is relatively easy to figure out. When you need to start a render, you just go to your plugins menu and click on the Render with Sync option. There, you just select the machines you want to use, the frame range, and the amount of machines you need. And once that is done, you're good to go. Everything needed uploads in the background, and if you go to the Zinc website, you can monitor the progress. There are a couple of bugs there as well, but nothing really bad. You definitely need to spend some time and figure out how the service works, and what is best for your needs. To their credit, they're very generous with the introductory amount of money you get during first setup. You receive $300 on setup, but you will definitely use all of them in order to figure out how everything works. The hardware you can use is divided into two categories. The regular machines, which are more expensive, but allow you to use them however long you want, and the preemptible machines, that are cheaper, but have some time limitations. Both of these categories have different tiers based on the specs of the machine. Both of them have the same machine setups. 8, 16, 32, and 64 core machines. The difference in price has to do with the fact that the preemptible machines might be taken away from you at any point. These, from what I gathered, are machines that Google is using for their own work, so if the load gets high on their side, they will terminate your session and your render will be queued again. Supposedly, if your render doesn't take more than two hours, you're safe, but it has happened to me that the render stopped after half an hour or so. And this is what you need to keep in mind while you use these machines. Let's say you chose a preemptible machine to render 100 frames and you're 90% done. If they take the machine away from you, you basically lose whatever you did up to that point. The machines don't continue from where they stopped. They just completely discard the job and start again. To add insult to injury, you're also charged for the amount of time you were using the machines. So you definitely need to be aware of that while using these options. I had a render job that cost double the money just because the machines kept resetting multiple times during the render. Thankfully, I was still using the demo money, but you can imagine how infuriating that would be if you had to use your own budget while trying to figure the service out. And uh, since we're talking about budgets, this is the pricing as of January 2017. So what do these prices mean? Let's take Cinema 4D as an example. 
It basically tells you that for one hour of rendering, you will pay for the cheap plan $1.03, and for the standard machines $3.31. The good news, if you're using Cinema 4D, is that Cinema is the cheapest option. Using Maya with V-Ray can be quite expensive even with the cheapest plans. And the same goes for Arnold for Houdini. On the other hand, you're out of luck if you're using an external renderer with Cinema. You basically need to find another service that supports your renderer. For me, it's not a big deal because I'm using physical, but it's definitely something you need to keep in mind. So, of course, the next question is, what kind of speed do you get with this amount of money? This is uh, where things get interesting. The specs of the machines are nowhere to be found on the website. At least I couldn't find them. Uh, the only thing we know are the number of cores each machine has and the memory. And that's about it. So you basically need to figure out on your own what kind of speed you can get. Thankfully, I did that already, so here goes. My work machine is an almost maxed out late 2012 iMac. So that means a 4-core, 3.4GHz i7 that turbo boosts to 3.9GHz and 24GB of RAM. The Cinebench score of this machine is 645 for Cinebench 15. So in order to compare the machines, I created a small scene that would be quite intensive when rendering. Uh, Cinema's physical renderer is not that bad uh, speed-wise, but when you start adding transparent surfaces like glass, things can choke up quite fast. So that's what I did. The scene contains a few glass surfaces and it's using the reflectance channel exclusively just to make things a little bit more tricky. This is the final rendered result. So a 720p image on my machine renders in 47 minutes and 49 seconds. Rendering the same scene on the 8-core zinc machine takes 49 minutes and 8 seconds. So that immediately tells us that even though we have an 8-core machine, the clock speed is quite low, probably 1.7 to 2 GHz, that would be my uh, guess. And as you will see with all the other machines, they are clocked around the same speed as the 8-core machine. So the 16-core option gets the job done in around 23 minutes, a little bit more than two times faster than the iMac. Of course, uh, great that we get a speed increase, but it's lower than what I would have expected. The 32-core machine renders the scene in around 13 minutes, and finally, the 64 core finishes the render in around 10 minutes. What we also see from this test is that you shouldn't go to the lower spec machines even though the plan seems very cheap to use. They will take longer to render, so you will end up paying more money than if you use the more expensive but faster machines. It looks like the sweet spot is the 32 core, with the runner-up being the 64 core machine. The 8 core actually costs a little bit more than double the money if you compare it with a 64 core. So I would say avoid using this option even though the price entry point might be too tempting. In the end, you will save up money using the more expensive option and you will also get your renders much much faster. And that's the other good thing with the Zinc service. They charge per minute with a minimum of uh, 10 minutes. So you're paying very close to the amount of time you were using the machine, which is uh, not the same with other providers. The other great thing is that you control how many machines you want to use and what each of them will render. You have 50 machines at your disposal with the option for more if you contact the customer service. Having 50 machines while rendering animations is absolutely great. One small tip when rendering animations, always use the max number of machines, assigning just a couple of frames uh, on each one. It'll be cheaper than just using two or three machines uh, that have 10 to 20 frames uh, each. Some other things you need to be uh, aware of. There are still limitations and buggy behaviors while using the service. For example, multiple accounts on the same machine are not really supported. What you need to do is log out of one account and into another through the external sync app. And the only way to make the Cinema 4D plugin to work with a new account is to uninstall it and install it again. So it works, but yeah, not really. You also don't have the ability to download your files on another computer. The app is looking for a specific folder structure and hard drive name, so you need to go back to the machine you started the render from in order to get your files. Sometimes it can get confused with uh, uh, files that have the same file name, especially if the previous job was cancelled. So in some cases, if you start a new job, it will also start the uh, previous one even though it was uh, stopped. 
Uh, in other cases, it might render the frame range of the previous cancel job even though the new one has a completely different frame range. So you need to pay close attention uh, while starting a new render. Uh, there's also no support for Unicode characters. V-Ray can be unstable for the 64 core option and the spaces and file names can uh, crash the jobs in Houdini. Uh, you also need to remember to delete your render files once you download them and finish with your uh, project. Otherwise, you'll be charged for the amount of space you're using. It's not a lot of money, but something you need to be aware of. Another uh, funny little thing I've stumbled on. It seems that the app cannot update itself. You need to manually download and update it. So, what are my final thoughts on uh, Google's uh, rendering service? Even though you need to figure out a lot of stuff and the user experience is all over the place, it's uh, definitely a really good service. It's extremely affordable if you're doing stills on Cinema 4D and relatively okay if you're doing animations. Uh, of course, things are, are a little bit different with uh, other packages, but uh, from what I've seen in other services, it's still uh, quite affordable and competitive. Uh, once you get through all the hurdles, you have a service that works quite well. And that's about it for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any questions about the service, let me know in the comments below. Talk soon!